got a coffee and a green smoothie and I'm in a market in Spain. It doesn't get any better than this for me, you guys. This is all I need in life. I'm a happy camper. There's a lot to love about Spain, from the food, to the weather, to the history, culture, and people. But one of the biggest perks about living in Spain has to be the country's affordable cost of living. If you're new here, I'm Kristen, and I've traveled to more than 60 countries in the last 20 years. And on my channel, we do a lot of cost of living guides, from Estonia, to Buenos Aires, to Bulgaria, to Japan. And in this video, I invite you to nerd out with me as we take a deep dive into Spain's cost of living. There are a lot of places that you might be considering living in Spain, and so to help you compare and contrast them, I've organized this video into five of Spain's top destinations. So we're gonna start with the most expensive and work our way down to the most affordable. So you'll have to wait till the end to find out which one is the cheapest. On our list today, we have Malaga, Madrid, Sevilla, Valencia, and Barcelona. And for each one, we're gonna cover the most important categories of cost of living expenses. So things like housing, utilities, groceries, restaurants, banking, healthcare, insurance, and more. The good news is that you really can't go wrong in Spain because Overall, there's only one Spanish city that ranks on the Mercer Index when it comes to the most expensive cities in the world, and that's Madrid. But it only ranks at 82 out of 100 cities. So we're starting at a really average cost of living and working our way down. Now before we begin, just a disclaimer that your specific cost of living is going to depend on a few different factors how long you plan to live in Spain, and also where you live. The longer you live in a destination, the lower you can get your cost of living. You can get access to more affordable long-term housing, but the other thing is that you start to develop this kind of sixth sense about the place that you're living in. So all of a sudden you go from feeling like a fish out of water to really living like a local. You start to dial in the local transportation. You know where you're gonna go to get your groceries and you know what the best restaurants are that have the best value, the best food, and aren't tourist traps. So the longer you get to know a place, the lower you can get your cost of living. And then on the other side, Side, where you live is also important. So hopefully this video will help you choose a destination out of five of Spain's most popular expat cities. So let's start with the most expensive place to live in Spain. I already gave it away, and it's Madrid. Madrid is Spain's largest city, and it's also the third largest city in the EU. Expats, tourists, and locals alike love Madrid for its really nice atmosphere, amazing food, art, culture, nightlife, and shopping scene. Madrid is also known for its high number of palaces, parks, and gardens. And it has a very mild climate with up to 350 days of sunshine per year. A fourth sunniest city in Europe, just behind Lisbon, Portugal. The cost of living in Madrid can be about 35% lower than living in a place like San Francisco or New York City. Online estimates for the cost of living in Madrid are between two and 4,000 euro per month. However, experienced expats have shared online that they're able to get their cost of living down to 2,000 euro per month or even 1,500. The biggest difference there comes with the rent prices. Nomad List has studios in the center going for about $900 per month and Airbnbs for an average of $18.75. But I checked prices on Airbnb for one month at different points throughout the summer, and I was able to find fully furnished one bedroom apartments starting at just around $1,000 per month. For utilities, you're looking at an average of about $170 per month, and among those, your internet can run you between $30 and $50, depending on the speed. Now in Spain, telecommunications are pretty standard across the country with a few main providers. So as an expat or a tourist, if you get a prepaid SIM card with a company like 
Vodafone, it's gonna run you between 10 and 20 euro per month, and that's gonna give you between 16 and 40 gigs of data, so not too bad. Let's talk food, one of my favorite topics. So I'm walking around in the old town in San Sebastian, and just basically on my own food tour. A kilo of apples in Madrid could cost you $2.30. A dozen eggs are $2.85. A loaf of bread, only 54 cents. Chicken, $3.50 per pound. And a bottle of wine, less than $8. If you're gonna eat out in restaurants, expect a cappuccino to cost you around $2.70, a beer, depending on what type it is, between one and $4, a bottle of water, less than a dollar, lunch, like the plate of the day, a drink, a main course, and maybe a dessert, around $13 to $15, and depending on how big you wanna go, a meal out for dinner can run you from $15 up to $60. Finally, tapas. For tapas, you're looking at about two to five dollars per plate. For transportation in Madrid, if you don't have a car, you can expect to pay around seventy dollars per month for public transit, thirty dollars for a taxi from the airport to the city center, and strangely, I found that an Uber was more expensive at around forty-two dollars. A co-working membership in Madrid could run you anywhere from $70 or $80 for a hot desk up to $170 or even $200 for a dedicated desk. But services are pretty affordable and you can expect to pay between $10 to $20 an hour for something like cleaning. Minimum wage in Spain is quite low though, coming in at 1,050 euro per month, which is right between the minimum wage in France and Portugal. So if you're living in Spain or any foreign country, naturally you're gonna wanna have a local bank account. But this is one of those things that can get really complicated really fast, especially if you're a US citizen. Now, how to open a bank account in a foreign country and what the requirements are is a topic for another video. But when it comes to your monthly banking fees, if you were to open a traditional bank account in Spain, right now a bank like Santander is offering their Cuenta Mundo account at fees of 10 euro per month. And then on top of that, you'll also wanna budget for ATM service charges and also ATM withdrawal fees. So according to Santander's website, that could be anywhere from 0.2% up to 4.5% with a withdrawal fee up to 350. The real complexity and the high cost of banking in foreign countries is one of the reasons that I've been using TransferWise for so many years. Now TransferWise was nice enough to sponsor this video, but I've been using their digital bank account for years before I ever launched this YouTube channel, and it's made my life a lot easier. TransferWise is an international account that lets you manage your money internationally, and you can send and receive money in different currencies for really low fees. You could use your TransferWise debit card in countries like Spain, and in most places where debit cards are accepted. And you can also minimize your international transfer fees, ATM fees, and Forex fees. If you're curious about opening an online account with TransferWise, check out the link in the video's description and get your first money transfer up to 500 British pounds free. Another expense to budget for is healthcare and insurance. So I like to get a policy that covers me in a lot of different countries around the world, but if you plan on staying in Spain for an extended period of time and you're not a European citizen and you don't have a European health insurance card, then you may be able to qualify for expat or non-resident coverage through a local insurance provider. And those rates will vary widely depending on the type of plan and company you get and also your age, but you could expect to pay between 
50 to 200 euro per month. I usually only use my travel medical insurance for emergencies, so during other times, I'm just paying out of pocket for medical care. So if you wanted to get a dental cleaning in Madrid, that can cost as low as 10 euro, up to 50 on average, and just a regular doctor's appointment will probably cost around 40 or 50 euro. You can even get a hotel or a home visit from a doctor through a company like mydoctorinmadrid.com for 120 euro. So the second most expensive place to live in Spain is Barcelona, and it actually ranks 102 on that Mercer index of the world's most expensive cities. But it's really similar to Madrid in cost of living and also days of sunshine. So whereas Madrid is the fourth sunniest city in Europe, Barcelona is not far behind in ninth place. The only notable difference in the cost of living between Madrid and Barcelona is that the rental prices are slightly lower in Barcelona. So you can expect to pay between 50 and 100 euro per month less, but almost everything else from groceries to utilities, internet plans, transportation, and meals out are going to be very similar. Now it's time to head down the coastline to Valencia, Spain's third largest city and right in the middle of our cost of living list. It also has a slightly milder climate than Madrid, so it's a little bit cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. And it's known for having a little bit quieter and more relaxed pace of life, but that doesn't mean it's boring. Valencia is also known for its beaches, nightlife, festivals, live music, and more. So again, the big difference here in the cost of living between Madrid, Barcelona, and Valencia is going back to the cost of housing. The same one bedroom in Madrid that could cost 1,000 euro per month or 950 in Barcelona will only cost you 750 euro in Valencia. Whereas a three bedroom that cost 1600 or 1500 in Madrid and Barcelona will only cost you 1200 in Valencia. Utilities and groceries are also slightly lower as is the cost of transportation. And for more help comparing and contrasting the five destinations in this video, you can get a link to my cost of living in Spain Google Sheet as well as a budgeting and planning template for digital nomads and expats in the link in the description below. Getting down to the cheapest destinations in our list, the second most affordable place to live in Spain is Malaga on the sunny Costa del Sol. Malaga is one of those quintessential Spanish beach towns and I passed through there in 2018 on my way to board the Nomad Cruise and I was immediately surprised by how affordable everything was. I remember my food bill at the market across from my hotel and out at restaurants and bars was really low and I went back and pulled up my credit card statement from when I was in Malaga and it looks like I was paying $75 per night for a furnished one bedroom apartment that was really nice in the city center. So that was on short term stays, nightly and weekly stays, but the people who I talked to at Malaga, like hostels and out and about, were just raving about how low the cost of living was for them. Just to compare, I was paying $75 per night for just a room in San Sebastian, Spain on the north coast. So Malaga is a lot more affordable. And the last city on our list is you guessed it, Seville. Located just inland from Malaga, Sevilla is the lowest cost city on our list today. In Seville, rather than over 1,000 euro per month in Madrid, you can expect to pay between 400 and 600 euro per month for a monthly rental. And in my property search for this video, I even found studios and rooms as low as two to 300 euro per month. Your utilities will also be about 10 to 20 euro lower per month compared to Madrid or Barcelona, and your grocery bill will be about 100 euro less per month. Transportation is also slightly cheaper at around $30 per month compared to 40 or even $70 per month in Madrid. And eating out is lower as well, with a very nice dinner for two, running you about 30 euro rather than 50 in Madrid and Barcelona. 
So just for comparison's sake, Whatever your cost of living is in Madrid or Barcelona, you can probably cut it in half by living in a smaller town within Spain or one of the towns on the Mediterranean coast. As a general rule of thumb, the north coast of Spain is more expensive than the south, and the bigger cities are more expensive than the smaller towns and villages. I read that one travel blogger was supporting a family of four on just $2,100 per month in Malaga, and that same thing, or even less, is possible in Seville. Are you planning on moving to Spain anytime soon? If so, where? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more cost of living guides to help you travel the world and work from anywhere. So I've done a lot of hiking in my day, but there's something about this walk that it's so exhilarating. Like I feel so much happiness right now just walking on this path. Um, there's definitely something special about it for sure.